Hello everyone, welcome to Move Well, Live Well. We get a number of people that come in here with issues regarding their foot and their ankle. And what's going on with these folks, they're complaining of numbing and tingling in the outside part of their foot, the pinky toe part of the foot and the ankle and sometimes the top of the foot. And these are snowboarders and skiers that are getting these problems. And what we're finding with these folks is I brought out good old Netter here. This will give you a better picture of what's going on with these folks. This is the Atlas of Human Anatomy by Frank Netter, MD. And I've opened it up to the page here. Let's see if you can see this. This is the page. This is the back of your thigh right here. And this is the back of your calf. And you can kind of see right here in yellow, right there. This is the sciatic nerve. And it breaks off into the pink. I've highlighted in the pink, this is the sural nerve. It breaks off right here into the sural nerve and it innervates in pink right here. This is the innervation of the sural nerve, which is a branch of the sciatic nerve. It innervates the back of the calf right here in red and also the lateral part, the outside part of the foot right there. That's the, uh, you can kind of see that. That's the sural nerve right there from the sciatic nerve. So they're in their boot and they're exercising in ways, their calf is moving in ways that haven't been moved like that in a while. And it's getting sore, it's getting tight. And this is a, the calf is an often neglected muscle group. It's very, very strong, but it's an often neglected muscle group to work on. So it gets tight in there, those nerves get compressed, and then you get kind of that numbing and tingling into the outside part of the foot. Now on the other page here, on the uh, second page right here, this is another picture right there. Again, this is a nice picture of the, the, the sciatic nerve is up here, breaks off into the sural nerve. And you can see here in yellow, this is the lateral dorsal cutaneous nerve. See that? Lateral dorsal cutaneous nerve. And right there, it innervates the outside part of the foot. And also, check this out. Sometimes these folks are getting numbing and tingling on the top of the foot too. So again, a branch of the sciatic nerve, you have the superficial fibular nerve. This is now the front of your calf, kind of the front to the side, front anterolateral part of the calf. So you have the superficial fibular nerve, also known as the peroneal nerve, a branch of the sciatic nerve. And you can see in yellow here, how right here comes down and innervates this kind of the top part of the of the foot right here and it also see that right there and so these guys these muscles these muscles right in through here also get tight and compressed it'll compress that nerve and you have pain and discomfort so how do you fix that how do you fix that numbing and tingling while in your foot while you're snowboarding or skiing well, there are three exercises that you can do to help alleviate that. First, what you do is you get your handy dandy foam roller. That's right. Again, like I said, this is an often neglected muscle group. The calf, very, very strong, but man, it can get really, really tight and nasty in through here. So what you do is you take your foam roller like this, tilt that down so you can see that and get my sexy legs right here looking good you start from dix distal to proximal and you work these tight areas of your calf like right there that's a tight area right there for me and you can just kind of oscillate back and forth on that tight area now I'm not sitting there putting a whole lot of pressure what I'm doing here is just getting enough just the weight of my leg basically to give enough pressure on that area of my calf to increase the flow, blood flow, circulation, and to decrease the tightness in that musculature in through there. See that? Boom. Especially down here on this, uh, the, right, right in through here. See, remember that nerve, that sural nerve comes down and innervates all this? So the, that nerve travels through this musculature right here, and that's kind of where you're hitting, right in through here. You can kind of see it like that, right there. 
and you're gonna search around, search around, find these tight muscles and work your way from distal to proximal to allow better blood flow. Right, and through here. Three to five minutes. This is the first exercise. Just kind of loosening up these bad boys. See that? Right in through there. Right there. If you don't have a handy dandy foam roller, you can use a handy dandy ball. Now this is a med ball and it's relatively, the, the, the density of it is pretty hard right there. So you can use a basketball at home, but the same idea. So you're finding these guys in through here like this and you're working those tight areas of your calf. See that? Work that musculature in. Man, these are tight and through here. Often neglected muscle group to work. So, that is the first exercise. Foam rolling and or using a basketball, soccer ball will work well, but you want a, a pretty good density. You don't want it too mushy because you want to be able to get in here and work these guys like this. So that's the first exercise. The second exercise is you want to start increasing your ankle range of motion. So we're finding on these folks, they're missing a little bit of ankle range of motion. First, we're finding tightness and junkiness in the calf. So you're breaking it up with the foam roller, excuse me, the, the ball and or the foam roller. Now we're gonna increase range of motion. I'm gonna bring you guys over here so you can kind of see this. This is, I've affixed, I've affixed a pull up assist band on the post right here. You can use a door, make sure you close the door. You're gonna wrap this around your ankle like this. See that? Right there near the crease of the ankle, right there. See, so I can still bend my ankle. So it's gonna be right around the crease of the ankle, just above, just slightly above that crease of the ankle right there. So now, I'm gonna pull this away from the wall or from the post, giving it some traction. Now, my tibia, my shin bones being pulled backwards this way. See that? It's being pulled backwards this way and it's distracting my tibia away from the foot a little bit. And I'm gonna go into a little bit of dorsiflexion. Let me move you guys like this side view right here. And now I'm going into a dorsiflexion, you see that? I'm gonna go into the end, kind of the end range of dorsiflexion and just kind of work in that in there. Boom, see that? Boom, just like that. First one with the foam roll and the ball, you know, work that for three to five minutes in, in those spots. And here you just do about, you know, 15 repetitions or so just to get that ankle to loosen up a little bit. And this is just strictly dorsiflexion right here. So my, this is my knee is, is straight on with my foot here. And I'm just going into the dorsiflexion like this. And after about 15 repetitions, what you wanna do now, this is still distracting, you wanna go outward, keeping your foot flat on the ground. If you want to, you can, you can hold your foot like this. And now I'm gonna go into the side, you see that? Into dorsiflexion. My knee's going this way, and I'm gonna go into dorsiflexion as well. See that? While my knee is going outward. So I'm gonna open up the hip a little bit as I do this. Right in there, just like that. And man, that's a good one. So again, 15 reps or so, just to get some ankle range of motion to free that joint up. So start here like this, and then work out like this, right in through there. That's gonna feel good. Now, that's the second exercise. The third exercise, now you don't necessarily even need to have the pull up assist band if you want, don't want, if you don't have one. I'll put links in the description for these objects because um, they do help assist you quite a lot with uh, some, of your, some of the issues that you may be having. But you don't necessarily need a pull up assist band to do this. But man, that feels great already. I can already feel how loose that ankle is just by doing that, a few repetitions on there. But if you want to, you don't, you don't have to have that. You can just have it like this and work dorsiflexion like this. So without having the pull up assist band. So you just kind of work that end range of dorsiflexion in here. It's a, it's, it's a little bit less effective, but it, does, it, it also does the job pretty well also. 
So right in through here, you can work it without the band and then work it in here without the band, just like that. And then you can also come out like this and work it just like that as well, without the band. The band is great because it just kind of holds everything back and you can really get inc really good increases of range of motion with the band. So the third exercise is uh, you could do like this. So let me put you guys right here, just like that. And so you're gonna do kind of like a yoga pose where you're gonna sit back. You see how this is my calf, this is from my calf. I'm gonna let my foot go flat here. Boom. See that? I'm gonna have my feet go flat. I'm gonna lift this, I'm gonna lift this one up too, just like that. Let my feet go flat, just like that. And then I'm gonna sit back onto my feet. Now, you may not have range of motion that allows you to be able to sit on your foot like this. Now I'm going into plantar flexion. You see that? My toes are back here. I'm basically sitting down on the front part of my feet. Because remember that nerve, remember the peroneal, the superficial peroneal nerve comes down here and does that and innervates this top part of the foot. They get numbing and tingling up here too. And this gets tight. So to loosen that one up, boom, you sit down on it. Just like that. This is a great stretch for your calves, or excuse me, your quads too, right in through here. But yeah, this opens up the front part of the foot right there. Now, if you don't have this range yet, what you can do is you hold on to a post or a, a chair, and you can go into, right, I like to tell folks to do this, you're going into toe flexion right here. See that? And you're working this end range of toe flexion and ankle plantar flexion right there. See that? Just like that. Again, two, uh, one set of just 15 reps just to get some increase of uh, range of motion in through there. This is what it looks like from the front, just to kind of free up that nerve from being compressed due to, you know, pressure of the boot. Also, as you exercise, the muscle gets kind of goes into a kind of a pump, you get increased blood flow in through there, and it becomes inefficient at uh, draining. So you want to create space in through there and give your ankle all the ranges it can, so that way that nerve stays free. So work those, search around for those tight angles, like right there, there's a tight angle for me right there. See that? And again, about a, you know, 15 repetitions, nice and easy. You're not sitting there putting your whole weight on it or anything like that. You're just kind of getting that range, that end range to become more free in through there. So that's the idea. So right there, that was kind of tight for me right there, right there. So that is the third exercise to free up that nerve, that sural nerve, and also the deep, the super, excuse me, the superficial peroneal nerve in the front that innervates kind of the top of the foot right here to free those two nerves up. So that way when you're skiing and snowboarding, numbing and tingling, gone. If you have any questions with this video, drop it off in the comment section below. We thank you for watching, we appreciate it. If you're new here, hit subscribe, and when you hit subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification button because that'll keep you in the loop with subsequent videos coming here in the near future, and that way you can continue to move well and live well also. I know you know folks who are struggling with numbing or tingling into the foot, and they could be snowboarders or skiers, or they could be just general folks when they're walking around or something like that, they get numbing and tingling in their foot. This could be happening to them. Share this with them. Sharing is caring. Also, give us a thumbs up, give us a like. It lets us know you care. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.